Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the last video in the series, we looked at three very common op amp configurations. The last one, the voltage buffer, was really a special case of the non-inverting amplifier, where you can think of either letting R1, this resistor to ground, go to infinity, or you can think of RF, the feedback resistance, as going to zero. In either case, our gain formula would reduce to the output being equal to the input. We're not going to need the voltage buffer today, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. The inverting amp configuration had the property that this could have a real gain, i.e. a positive gain, or it could have a gain less than one, in which case it would be attenuating. And when I say gain in this inverting context, I really should probably be saying something like inverting gain, but I'll rarely say something like a gain of negative five. I'll say a gain of five and then otherwise indicate that it's inverting. But I'll confess right now, I may not always be entirely consistent with that. So here when I'm saying a gain less than one, I mean this quantity here, this RF over R1 is less than one. So that would be attenuating. In contrast, unless you're intentionally going to that degenerate voltage buffer situation, the gain of the non-inverting amplifier configuration is bigger than one. So it has to be a true gain. So let's imagine that you wanted to create a circuit that would subtract two voltages. Well, you could go to Google and you could search for op amp circuits for subtraction, or you could try to imagine how would somebody come up with such a circuit to begin with? Well, let's look at these basic configurations and think about what we have. We have something here that multiplies a number coming in, but it has a plus sign on it. And we have something here that multiplies a voltage coming in by a number, but it has a minus sign on it. So maybe we could combine these circuits in some way. And by combine, I don't mean just put one after the other. So I would like to make a little bit of the change to the notation. Let's change this VI to V1 because I want to have multiple inputs because I'm subtracting them. And what I'm calling VN here, let's change that to read V plus. So I'll change VI here to V plus. As you might guess, we're going to do something interesting with this. Well, not terribly interesting. We're going to do something to this later. So notice both of these circuits have an R1 hanging off the negative terminal going somewhere. And they both have an RF that connects the negative input terminal to the op amp output. So let's think about those common components. Both of those circuits have a feedback resistor, RF, and they both have a resistor, R1. But now let's see how they're different. In the inverting configuration, we apply V1 to R1 and we ground the positive terminal. And in the non-inverting configuration, we apply an input voltage to the positive terminal and then ground this other end of the resistor, R1. So they're basically the same circuit, but they just differ in where we're applying the voltage and where we're applying the ground. I can think of those grounds as being zero inputs. So I could think of using the idea of superposition and applying V1 to this R1 resistor input spot, and I'll apply V plus to the positive terminal of the op amp. Now, every introductory circuits textbook that I'm aware of will tell you that you can't use superposition with dependent sources. That's not true. You can use superposition with dependent sources. You just have to be careful with how you do it. And Marshall Leach wrote a great paper explaining how to do that. It is well worth your time to go through these examples. So let's temporarily imagine that I'm going to plug in a voltage V1 and that we're setting the V plus to zero. So that's basically like grounding this positive terminal. So I can use this formula so we can write VO equals minus RF over R1 V1. So that's the term associated with V1. Now let's flip it around and input a voltage V plus, but set V1 to zero, which effectively grounds it which means we can now use this formula. So we can write plus one plus RF over R1 
times v plus. Dun dun dun. So I have v plus appearing with some scaling factor, and then I have v one appearing with a minus in front of it, so that is doing some subtraction. And here I have a related but different scaling factor. Over on the right, I have this one plus, but over on the left, I don't. Now there may be situations in which I want to subtract two signals, but I want to scale them differently, or I may want to scale them both the same way. Either way, I would like some additional flexibility in this design. So all I've done here is to move around our nascent subtraction circuit and the associated formula, and remove the original inverting and non-inverting configurations to make space. Okay, let's workshop the circuit a little bit more. If I want to start hacking on the circuit to try to give me some more flexibility, an ideal place to do that is here at the positive terminal, because assuming that this op amp is ideal, which I've been doing, this is a high impedance input. There's no current flowing through here. So I can add a bunch of resistors here and think about whatever I'm doing over here as being separate from the rest of the circuit and analyze it on its own. Let's scoosh the V plus symbol down a bit, and let's take a copy of this formula and drop it down. I obviously don't want to add any more op amps or other strange things to the circuit. A good place to start is to think about the simplest things you can add, and that would be a couple of resistors to develop a divide down ladder. Let's call this RA, and I'll call this resistor down here RB, and let's define a new input V2, and VB is dropping to ground. So the only thing we'll be able to do with this divide down ladder is apply some gain that's less than one. So of course, this is really an attenuation and that's a terrible looking R. Let me fix that. That's a terrible looking A for that matter. My goodness. See, this is why I sometimes think I should be using PowerPoint, but I find drawing on my little graphics tablet here to be more fun. Remember the main game we're playing here that makes this easy to analyze is that I'm assuming that this is a high impedance input, so I can just apply the divide down ladder to V2 and use the simple formula. So what winds up being plugged in for V plus is going to be RB over RA plus RB multiplied by V2. So this now gives us a lot of flexibility in how to weight these different voltages. Now, of course, a very common application might be just to subtract two voltages without any weightings at all. How about I let R1 be just R and RF be R, and now I'm not putting any subscripts because I don't need to worry about what to name them. So here's my V1. So in the special case where RF is R1, I would wind up with an output which is just minus V1 for my first term. And then for my second term, I would have one plus one, which is equal to two. So in this particular case where RF is equal to R1, then to counteract this gain of two, I could set RB and RA the same so then that this would form a gain of one half to cancel that two. Let me move this down for space. So here, let me write R prime, R prime. Now I could let R prime equal R. I could make these all be the same. It doesn't really matter much. So I'll put my V2 here. So I'll write plus V2. And what would the resulting formula be? Well, I would have two from one plus the RF over R1, where RF R1 on the same. And I'll have one over two from setting RA and RB equal to R prime, but these twos wind up canceling. So I'm just left with V2. So usually you might write this as V2 minus V1. Now, I could have presented this lecture by just saying, here's the standard form for a subtractor using op amps, here's the general formula, and then here's a particular special case that's commonly used. And admittedly, that's the way I describe the initial inverting and non-inverting configurations in the previous lecture. But I wanted to emphasize this kind of superpositional thinking as a way of looking at common circuit patterns and coming up with new circuits. 
most electrical engineering curriculums spend a lot of time showing you various circuits that somebody else has made. But we don't do a lot of work on explaining how it is that someone might have thought of those circuits to begin with. And that kind of intuition is something I would like to help you develop.